Hey there everyone, David East here from the Firebase team and today on Firecast I'm going to switch over to the web and talk about one of my favorite libraries, Angular Fire. So Angular Fire is the officially supported AngularJS binding for Firebase and at its core it handles the data synchronization between your local data model and your Firebase database. But you know, what does that actually mean? Well, in the majority of Angular apps, you're downloading data from a server and then populating a local object or an array. And that takes a fair amount of boilerplate code and usually leads to some complicated async data flow. So Angular Fire integrates Firebase's real-time observers with Angular's digest loop, which removes the boilerplate code and simplifies the asynchronous data flow from the server. Today on the show, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get up and running with Angular Fire. I'll start by showing you how to get everything installed and properly set up, and then I'll cover the data collection bindings, Firebase Object, and Firebase Array. So let's get started. So to get started with Angular Fire, I'm going to download it. So I'm going to use Bower. I'm going to write Bower install and do Angular Fire and Angular Route, because we're also going to use the router. And then now that we have installed, we'll close up the terminal and we have our script tags included. And so these are all the dependencies we need. We need Firebase, Angular, the router, then Angular Fire, and then now the app. So let's go and open up the app. The last step of installing Angular Fire is to declare it in the dependency array. So right next to ng route, we need to declare the Angular Fire module name, which you might think is Angular Fire, but it's not. It's actually called the Firebase module. And with that declared, you're completely set up. So the install is pretty easy. Now let's move on to, you know, actually like writing some code. As I mentioned before, the magic of Angular Fire is that it handles the data synchronization between your local data model and your Firebase database. And there's two ways of modeling data with Angular Fire, as an object and as a list. For objects, you use Firebase Object. And for lists, you use Firebase Array. So let's dive into that. So Firebase object works really well at dependency injection, which means I'm going to inject it right here into the controller. I'll declare Firebase object, and then now I need to create a root reference to the Firebase database. So right over here, snap to the side, is Vulkan, which is the Firebase data viewer. And the Firebase database is pretty simple. This is our root, then we have a users node, and there's these children user nodes. And then each user node has a name as well as a username property. And the goal here for Firebase object is we want to synchronize this David object. So to do that, we'll say slash users and then slash David or dot child of users dot child of David. So we'll create the David ref root ref dot child of users dot child of David. Then I'll create a property on the controller. This.user is a Firebase object with the David ref passed in. So now we're going to create a template and we're going to use this pre tag. And the pre tag is pretty useful for when you actually need to debug your data because what you can do is, is you can pipe your data out to JSON. So now I have a nice little JSON representation of the data in the browser. And as you can see, you probably recognize the name and username properties because, you know, they're the same. But what you might not recognize are the dollar keys. So dollar ID and dollar priority. So when data comes back from Firebase, it doesn't come back as this data. You get it back as a data snapshot, which contains important metadata like the key and the ordering priority. What Angular Fire wants to do is it wants to synchronize that into your object. So it can't just return the snapshot, but at the same time, we don't want to forget all this important information. So it gets tacked on as these dollar keys. And you don't ever have to worry about them getting persisted to your Firebase database because Angular Fire strips them out before any saves happen. So now let's see our real-time bindings in action. Let's rename David and from David East to David. And then when it updates, you can see right here, it updated the name. So it's pretty cool that we have real-time bindings really based off this Firebase object right here. But there is a code smell, actually two code smells, and just this one line of code. So Angular loves dependency injection, probably a little too much, but still. Dependency injection means never having to say new. But here we are in the controller saying new. So that's one code smell. The next code smell is this magic string right here. Because this is really no good, because it could get changed, or we could have a typo, and it just destroys everything. 
So to fix this magic string, we'll go and create a constant. So say dot constant of Firebase URL and pass in the root ref. So that takes care of our magic string issue. Now we'll take care of the new issue. So to take care of the new issue, it would be really nice if we could inject a root ref into the controller. So to do that, we'll create a service and we'll call it root ref. And then we're going to pass in this array where the first element is going to be the constant of Firebase URL. And the second one is going to be the Firebase constructor function. And this might look a little weird, but it's really the same thing as saying new Firebase with the URL, since this Firebase URL is this string. So with this root ref service, it could get injected into the controller. But instead of doing that, I'm going to refactor all of this code into a service. So in between these two, I'll write a function and call it users, and then inject the root ref as well as the Firebase object. And then we'll create a users ref, which is root ref .child of users. And what I want to do is, is I want to synchronize the user using Firebase object of the David ref. But rather than just always synchronize the David ref, I'm going to create a method. And I say this dot get is a function that takes in an ID. And using this ID, we can return a Firebase object of users ref dot child of ID, which we can really pass any of these keys as this ID. So now we just have to register it with the main module. And then down in the controller, we can get rid of our Firebase object, and really all this code, and inject users, and then say this.user is users.getDavid. And as you can see, we still have our template with all the data, and it still works as it did before. So we'll go and edit the name back to David East, and when we hit save, it just updates it lightning fast. So it was cool as using this Firebase object to get really simple real-time data bindings from our Firebase database is there is one really, really important thing you need to know. And that when you download data to a browser, so from this Firebase database, it comes back as an asynchronous operation. And it doesn't actually look like that inside of our controller. As you can see, we're assigning a return value from users.get to this.user, which would signify that we're actually synchronously downloading the data. And that would be really, really bad, but that's not actually what's happening. And to demonstrate this, let's go and log the user to the console. So console.log this.user, and we'll also log the property. So this.user.name. So when we open up the browser, we can see that something kind of strange is going on here in the console. We can see that when we log the user, it comes back with a populated user, which kind of makes sense because we have this data over here. But when we log the user's name, so console.log this.user.name, that came back as undefined. So why is this populated even when it was logged first, and this is undefined when it was logged second? So this actually makes sense. So a Firebase object starts out as an empty object. So when we logged this.user, it actually logged this empty object right here. And then immediately after, it went to log the name property on this empty object, which didn't exist, so it logged undefined. Then the Firebase database started downloading data to the object and populating its properties as it received data. And since when you log objects to the console, it logs the reference, it updates the log in the console. But the property is a string, so it doesn't update the reference, it just prints the value. So that's why it looks a little crazy, because it updates this as it gets updated, but it's not going to update the string value. And this really is the magic of Angular Fire. As data keeps coming down from the Firebase database and updating the Firebase object, it's going to fire off Angular's digest loop. And the digest loop goes and checks for all these new values and then updates the view. So really what you're doing here is you're keeping your view updated with your Firebase database and you're doing it with just a few lines of code. So a Firebase array also works with dependency injection. So we can include it into our users service. And a Firebase array is actually really similar to a Firebase object in the sense that it wants to take in a reference. But this is a reference to a specific object, whereas we actually want to create a reference to the parent node, so users. So rather than using this get function, which returns one user, we'll create another function called this.all. And what that'll do is return a Firebase array and then pass in the users ref, since this root ref .child of users points to the parent node. So now in the controller, we can delete logs, and we don't getting one user, we're getting all the users. So we'll change it to this.users, and then we'll go and update our template. So we'll create a UL, and then we're going to create an LI. And then inside of this LI, we'll use an ng repeat, and we'll say user in users. And we'll make sure to attack the controller onto that. 
and then we'll put user.name. So we'll have a whole list of names. And what this will do is, is since we're synchronizing the users, it'll go and update each user. So Alice, Bob, and David, and print out the name for each one. So as you can see, it totally worked. We have our three users inside of the Firebase database, and it still works in real-time data synchronization. If we go and modify David East back to David, that updates over here, and we just go and delete Bob, and Bob deletes in real time. So that's the 101 on getting set up with Angular Fire. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, you can just totally go and complain in the comments. Wait, no, don't, don't do that. Anyways, tune in next week where I'll be covering Angular Fire in depth and going over the dollar loaded promise and showing you where you do and do not need it. Spoiler alert, you don't always need it. But that's all for this show. So I will see you next time and thanks for watching.